there's a beauty to this world, an order. That's what we like to believe. We're not wrong. There is an order, a grand design. We made sure of that. It was a dream for so long, and we finally made it real. Not a better world, a perfect one. And you, you should have seen the look on his face. Mm. Okay, we're rolling. Okay. Um, this is a one-stop shop for custom I.O., a framework defined by two traits. You can use it as a runtime, seamlessly integrating into Tokyo if you wish, or build something completely bespoke with zero dependence on the standard library. In this video, we'll iterate through how and why we came up with MFIO, see how it compares to existing I.O. systems, and show you how to build something trivially that beforehand was some quite arduous to create. So, I.O. can be anything, but uh, for practical purposes, let's consider files. Historically, OS considers files as tapes with read and write head. If you wish to extract data, you first move the head to an appropriate location and then issue a read. This is great if you wish to process files sequentially, but in any concurrent and random access scenario, the system's performance disintegrates. In addition, ever since solid state drives, the model can be considered archaic, antiquated, obsolete. A better model involves adding a position parameter to every I.O. request. But this does not solve the concurrency problem. A manageable way to deal with concurrency is to introduce batching. You submit as many I.O. operations as you can in a single batch, and then uh, the, the backend will do the rest. This is great on very fast I.O. because it optimizes system call performance. However, it does not handle very long running operations, and it's actually pretty cumbersome from the user's perspective to build these batches. The perfect model is the one that is asynchronous. It is much harder to design one that works really well, but once you do, you win the following things. First, automatically batch operations without the user having to think about it. What the user thinks instead is dependencies and the backend takes care of the rest. And another thing is the user can keep computing things while IO is happening in the background. This is really amazing, if you ask me. Uh, and MFIO achieves all of these things and more. First of all, every request can be filled out partially and non-sequentially. This is extremely useful for sparse resources. In addition, we maintain support for doing I.O. between the stack and the destination. This makes MFIO as close to zero cost as possible. And if you don't want to deal with the complexities of asynchronous code, you don't have to. MFIO has a really elegant way to resolve asynchronous code without subjecting user to it. And finally, the system does not build on the assumptions of the standard library. This means the core library can be used as a framework for enabling I.O. on any custom operating system or embedded environment for that matter. I did all this because I was not satisfied with Memflow's synchronous API. In fact, we had similar ideas dating back 2020. The project was originally meant just for Memflow, and it will be used in Memflow, bringing probably the biggest upgrade to the library in this decade. However, MFIO has far wider reach than just forensics. It can be used in other non-experimental parts of the Rust ecosystem. Like, 
I usually tend to be rather humble and this is the complete opposite of it. However, this is because I'm actually extremely proud of the end result. Let's take a look at some benchmarks. Let's do a comparison between the systems. So we're doing a fairly simple set of tests. We're doing sequential and random reads on an 8 gigabyte sized file in 2 gigabyte of RAM sized VMs. You have 1 byte chunks, 256 byte chunks, and 64 kilobyte sized chunks. We've got three reference data points, uh, the standard library, Tokyo, and then another asynchronous IO framework for the given operating system. So in this case, we've got Glomaya. We could be more granular, but this covers most of the bases. And if you wish to see the full report, then overflow the like button and then go to the description to grab the link from there. So let's just take a look at how, how it works. So standard library is fairly fast. It's got 3.2 megabytes per second at the worst case scenario and 3.7 gigabytes per second in 64K chunks. Spoiler alert, these are going to be one of the best results because operating systems are designed for a sequential IO. Now, Tokyo, it takes a massive hit and I have one possible explanation and that is thread synchronization is really difficult and Tokyo under the hood, it calls into standard library inside a blocking thread pool. So that's one of the explanations. Now, Glomio, as you can see, it's a really wonderful framework based on IO Euring. However, it's still slower than a standard library, which makes sense. And that's because, well, it's not designed for sequential IO. For sequential IO, you've already got standard library. It works perfectly fine. Now, uh, we've got two MFIO backends. We actually got three, but the third one is Mayo, and it would end up somewhere in between. So the thread-based implementation, it's very simple. It spawns a thread for each type of IO operation that's possible. And the performance, it's, it's actually faster than Tokyo. It sits between Tokyo and standard library, and it should be compared between these two. However, it doesn't do much amazing things because, well, it's lots of thread synchronization. It's highly inefficient, actually. Now, IO Euring, it actually takes the lead in 64k chunks, but it's still slower than the standard library, and it's expected. And also, another thing to note is that our IO Euring implementation and like our thread implementation are severely under-optimized, and that's because I built them just to test whether the core library design makes sense. And I implemented these backends in a couple thousand lines of code for each, and it works really, really nice, actually. So this is all fun and games. However, where we really shine, where completion IO really shines, is random performance. So let's take a look at it. Standard library immediately takes quite a big hit. As you can see, we top off at just shy of one gigabyte per second. Mind you, before it was three and a half. Tokyo is actually much closer to standard library than it was before. It's just about 20% slower, up to 50% slower. Glomio shows how completion IO, how asynchronous completion IO shines, shatters everything in terms of uh, random access performance. So we've got 203,000 IO operations per second being fulfilled. That's much more than standard library. And the performance stops off at around 2.58 gigabytes per second. That's about 30% shy from the original uh, from the original sequential performance. We're fairly close. <laughs> and our thread implementation, it goes back to being fairly close to the standard library in between Tokyo and, and the library. And our IO Euring implementation, it it trades blows with Glomio. It's slightly slower, but there can be some run-to-run -run variants. And also, once again, we're quite unoptimized. Just taking all these numbers in consideration, you can see that there are two main groups. One is the standard library-based ones and truly asynchronous completion IO. Truly asynchronous completion IO shatters everything when it comes to random access performance. 
and this is really great. Like, it shows that this model is viable. However, this is not it. While Glomio really is great on Linux, it does not have Windows support, and we do. So let's take a look at it. Instead of Glomio, we've got Compio, which uses IOCP as its backend. And instead of our IOUring backend, we've got our IOCP backend. As the name implies, it uses IOCP, which is Windows way of doing a synchronous completion IO. So let's take a look at the results. Standard library has these numbers. It's slightly less than Linux, even though the VMs aren't identical. The only difference is the disks are using emulated SATA instead of uh, Virtio. So that could explain the difference. Or the operating system has different behavior. Now, Tokyo, it for some reason is faster at the top end, which implies that the operating system has some funny caching behaviors happening. But on 256 by chunk C, it's much slower. Compio is uh, overall fairly comparable to Tokyo. It, uh, it is a bit slower than the standard library. And our thread implementation, it for some reason is the fastest of, out of all, except for one by chunks. And uh, I cannot explain these numbers actually. I think uh, it's just the operating system doing funny thing. Now, if we take a look at our IOCP backend, you can see it. Uh, it is fairly comparable to Compio. In fact, the results are nearly identical. These are identical. These are identical. The only difference is here. But uh, come on, that's fairly minimal. Now, let's take a look at random performance, which, which is something we actually care about. Standard library takes a hit. Uh, Tokyo takes an even bigger hit, but it's fairly close to standard library. This behavior is actually different from Linux. On Linux, Tokyo takes a much bigger performance hit. Here, we're doing quite good, actually. Comp.io shows that completion asynchronous I.O. has its place, even on Windows. And thread implementation goes back to being comparable to these two, and our IOCP is comparable to Comp.io. So this is all great. Uh, this shows that uh, completion IO, like MFIO, has its place, has a potential for really, really great performance. But as you can see, the numbers are not massively different, unlike IO Euring compared to the standard library. And this indicates that you can't really do too much unless the operating system exposes the right APIs. Finally, here's a simple usage sample. Suppose you want to read a file. First, you create a runtime and just initialize it. Then, spin it up using block on, and inside the async block, what you want to do is open up a file. You just do runtime open and give a path, give the mode, and the wait to completion. Then, you create a buffer and read everything from that buffer into it. Funnily enough, this is an example of fully sequential I.O. But uh, that's just for an example, and you just print out the data and that's it. Now, suppose you want to do all of this over the network. What you can do is just create another intermediate step using our experimental network file system. Don't use it in production, be careful. So what you need to do is uh, compile the network file system server available in the repo and put it in here, put the runtime, and you're good to go. And then it works just the same. In the end, basically, your code does not really have to care about the IO backend it uses. Because we define our runtime as a set of traits, we just put a runtime into your code and it works like magic. It's truly remarkable. As you can see, MFIO is an elastic, malleable system achieving production-grade performance. However, we're far from stable. There's no battle testing done yet. And uh, even though our test suite is very wide-ranging, I would still not put our library on your next Mars rover. Next year, maybe. <laughs> Another point of contention is that our API surface is incomplete. 
The core library is very simple, but the runtime, it has files, it can serve content over TCP, but you will find some missing gaps here and there. So be warned, but if you're willing to get your hands dirty, try it out. I think it's a rewarding experience and like be sure to give some feedback because I really care about it. Overall, I think what we have right now is a good first iteration that's done, that needs more shaping to be done. And in the end, it will end up as a really, really fascinating, remarkable IO framework. So thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this, be sure to overflow the like button and grab the code from GitHub. My name was Heap, yours was undefined, see ya.